and my uh, paper today will be focused on uh, colonnade streets uh, of Roman Cilicia and Pamphylia, so as to try to understand uh, how local patterns and Syrian influences uh, overlapped in these sites. Uh, as everybody knows, colonnade streets are uh, monumental structures recurring in several Roman cities of southeastern Anatolia, both in Cilicia and in Pamphylia. They were an original creation of the Roman East, whose prototype must be identified in the colonnade avenue of Antio on the Orontes, who is the real prototype. Uh, these colonnade streets dated back to the early first century AD, and starting from this earlier attested case, after a chronological gap of quite a century, which has not been explained yet in a thorough way, the majority of Syrian cities was provided of monumental colonnade streets since the late first and early second century AD. The reign of Trajan can be considered as a turning point as in the following decades, the major projects of colonnade streets were realized in the Near East and also in Asia Minor, maybe with a little delay. Uh, the construction of colonnade streets was considered as essential for the self-representation of the cities themselves, both in Cilicia uh, and in Pamphylia. Uh, this paper aims uh, at analyzing uh, how mutual influences between Syria and Asia Minor affected the diffusion of colonnade streets in Cilicia and Pamphylia, and if these regions, because of their position at the crossroads, played a key role within this process. I will try to examine the, so the development of an innovative and architectural model between Syria and Asia Minor. And at this purpose, it is necessary to analyze both the urban patterns and the architectural features of the porticos lying in the streets, not forgetting to shed light on the materials employed and to the functions. So let's start with urban features and overall layout of colonnade streets. As, as a matter of fact, the building of such imposing and continuous colonnades during the imperial age was realized quite always along already existing paths, normally the most important urban route or routes, if there are more than one, and when they overlapped upon a regular urban grid, the porticos were linear and gave to the street a monumental and regular perspective, interrupted only by the crossroads with lateral streets or by the projecting propylaea of some particular buildings. In other cases, such as that very famous of Palmyra in Syria and Bosra, but also, as we can see, in Anazarbos in Cilicia or Perga in Pamphylia, the street had, due to various reasons, a broken and zigzag pattern, and this is the case of Anazarbos, uh, and this is the case of Perge. Uh, and so the colonnades, the newly built colonnades, necessarily follow this pattern, and at the crossing points, isolated monuments such as Tetrapila, Tetrachiona, and Tetrastila uh, were built in order to dissimulate the irregularity. These features appear in many Cilician and Syrian sites and are exactly aimed at correcting the divergences and at giving a better unitary perspective to the street. Uh, what looks peculiar is that southeastern Anatolian cities, more than elsewhere, uh, adopted the construction of a colonnade street even in difficult orographic conditions, and in this case we are dealing with newly built streets and newly built um, colonnade, uh, so that in some cases, one of these is the very famous uh, site of Antioch and the Pragos, on which I will not go on because we have our colleagues from the excavation here, uh, the case of Siedra uh, and Termesos in Pamphylia, where terraced walls were necessary to support the porticos, as there was not enough flat space to accommodate the whole monument. And so, uh, in some cases, it was necessary to, make, to build a terrace, like here in Siedra, uh, with only one line of colonnades, uh, in other cases, such as Termesos and also Antiochia and the Kragos, it was necessary to build 
a double storied portico uh, on the sloping side so as to flatten the area. And uh, uh, we are dealing with, this is the case of Termasos, uh, colonnade streets with pedestal for statues as some fragments of statues uh, still in, on site. And this is Antiochian de Gragos before excavation, a long time ago. Uh, and you can see the, uh, it's not very exact because it's going like this, uh, the colonnade streets uh, is on the slope of the hill, so it was necessary to build up a double storied portico to uh, sustain the street. Uh, these cities, even if not very big, uh, felt the necessity of having a representative monument such as a colonnade street in the same way as bigger and regular planned cities. And what is worth to be underlined is that some of them, such this, ca uh, this case, adopted marble and granite for the columns so a quite expensive material. But the entablature, as we will see, was in local stone. Let us come to architectural features uh, in order to investigate possible connections between Syrian and Cilician Pamphylian trends in colonnaded streets. At a first glance, Cilician porticos were more similar to Syrian ones, being built entirely in local limestone and with columns made of various superimposed drums. Consequently, they could reach even considerable dimensions. This is the case, for instance, of Suloi Pompeiopolis before and after the restoration. This fact may be attributed cautiously to the absence of marble quarries in Cilicia and also in Syria. But I think that the reasons must be found elsewhere, as I think the paper by Marcello Spano, which will follow, uh, can uh, explain clearly. But moving towards the west, starting from Antiochian de Kragos and from there towards Pamphylia, we assist to the construction of porticos partly or entirely in marble. And these regions were not provided of marble quarries as well. So the choice of marble was certainly due to other reasons, mainly requirements of magnificence and self-representation. As far as specific features are concerned, we can see here that Suloi Pompeiopolis, this is the only case I know in Cilicia, used in some portions of the porticos, uh, fluted columns, which are, for example, uh, adopted with vertical and spiral flutes in Apamea on the Oronte in uh, Syria. And also another important feature that appears in some Cilician sites like this one, Suloi Pompeiopolis, Diocaesareia, Anasarbos, and Epiphaneia, we have consoles aimed at supporting statues inserted in or worked in the same piece of, like this one, the drums. And this peculiarity is quite unattested elsewhere in Asia Minor and seems to be a clear imitation of Syrian models such as those very famous of Palmyra uh, or Apamea, but also at the site uh, as Girasa and Bosra. Uh, colonnade streets became so a sort of theory of statues placed on consoles with inscriptions. Uh, in the other regions under consideration, I mean mainly Pamphylia, the same task was performed by statue bases uh, with statues lining the street and placed in the intercolumniation. So um, the same function was uh, realized in a different way. Moreover, it is worth underlining the adoption of consoles having structural purpose at Hierapolis Castabala in Cilicia. As we can see here in this photo of uh, Freya Stark of 1958, where uh, a console is still standing but not projecting towards this, the carriageway, uh, which is here, but projecting along the line of the colonnades. And this is a fragment I found during my previous researches in Cilicia. And these consoles were not certainly aimed at supporting statues, but had a stat statical purpose. Um, they needed to connect the entablature of different stretches of porticos laying at a dissimilar height. The case of Eurapolis Castabale is very interesting because uh, the street is sloping down from east to west, and so it was necessary to uh, realize such uh, infrastructures because the column bases were not at the same height, and so the stretches of the porticos would be like, uh, uh, like that. 
And as far as I know, a similar architectural solution is never attested in marble colonnade streets, mainly because marble <laughs> column shafts were carved according to certain standard parameters. Let's get to the functions, uh, because this is, uh, infrastructures were at the same time monumental buildings contributing to the decor of ancient sites and functional structures whose utilities has often been underestimated. And how distinctive were these aspects in the colonnaded streets of southeastern Anatolia? And how can we compare these aspects with the wider Eastern Mediterranean panorama? I can answer immediately to this uh, question because the, the colonnaded streets under examination are exactly the same uh, from these purposes, from this point of view, as the other ones. As far as the decor, I have already underlined many aspects uh, concerning the magnificence of such buildings from manifold points of view. But I would like to uh, underline, as far as grandiosity, uh, the colonnade streets of Anazarbos, which is now under excavation, uh, whose width is certainly extraordinary. The carriageway is approximately 29 meters wide, making of this street the largest known example at present time. Uh, we have to consider that the average width of a colonnade street is 12, 15 meters, so 29 is the double. Recent excavations demonstrated that it consisted in reality of two separate carriageways, which is again a unique solution in antiquity. A similar solution, even, uh, okay, here we can, you can see a, a comparison of colonial districts of Cilicia, uh, which are all approximately the same, and Anazarbos, which is completely uh, different. <coughs> Uh, another case um, where a large street, uh, but not so large, uh, is attested is Perge, where the carriageway is crossed longitudinally by a water channel originating from the new film at the foot of the Acropolis. Also, the materials employed, mainly in the, in the stoai, are worth to be considered upon this perspective. Some, mainly those in Cilicia, Pedias, and Eastern Trachea, were built in local stone, as we saw, which was the resource more easily available, as happened in Syria. Limestone is mainly attested. This is the case of Apamea, where the whole colony street, <coughs> apart from restorations, it was in uh, local limestone. But we have also cases of the use of polychrome breaches, the upper uh, images are from Anazarbos and the lower one from Hierapolis Castabala, in order to imitate marble and create a polychromatic effect and contrast. In Western Cilicia and in Pamphylia, the stoai were made, on the contrary, essentially of marble, at least for what concerned the columns, whereas the upper entablature could be in local limestone, like in the case of Siedra or Antioch and the Kragos and so on, or entirely in marble, like the case of Side. Uh, an exception can be Tarsus, which is in plain Cilicia, and adopted some marble elements for the porticos, but uh, of course this is the capital city of the province, and so uh, it could be an exception. A question arises then, why did some cities chose to adopt local stone and others marble? Uh, was it a matter of fashion or of expenditure? I will not concentrate on fashion because it is Marcello Spano's paper, but I will concentrate on the problem of expenditure as a few years ago I tried to reconstruct uh, the realization costs of a colony street entirely made in limestone and uh, to compare it to a colony street entirely made in imported marble or partly made in imported marble. So I choose the example of Soloi Pompeiopolis and Antioquia on the Kragos. And um, at the end, it resulted that the two buildings had approximately the same cost. But the difference was that the first monument, Soli Pompeiopoli, was the double in terms of height, and so had certainly a bigger impact. But on the, con on the other side, a portico made in marble was more elegant, and the decorative details, mainly of the capitals, the Corinthian capitals, were more accurate. As far as the utilitas, uh, we know that uh, colonnade streets uh, had uh, the aim of giving shelter from sun or rain, depending on the season, and protecting pedestrians from vehicles and traffic running along the street. Also, they were used, 
as additional um, commercial areas to the shops behind the porticos, as many inscriptions um, uh, graved on the columns attest, mainly for later periods, uh, because in the space between, in between the columns, movable stands could to place, and we know uh, the crowded life of under the porticos of Ocolone district in Antioch on the Ronce through the accounts of Libanios. And the third, less considered um, or underestimated function is the sacred religious one, which not excluded the, pre um, the previous two, but uh, we are dealing with both urban streets and suburban roads having the peculiarity of connecting the city with the sanctuary or to monumentalize the access to a sacred area within a city. The most famous case is certainly that of Palmyra, where the main street uh, connecting two fundamental reference points, the Temple of Bel and the Funerary Temple, was provided uh, of colonnades in a long time scale, approximately one century and a half, but we can find two parallels in Cilicia. The best one is Hierapolis Castabala, uh, where the porticos were probably aimed also at adorning the street leading to the sanctuary of the patron goddess and guiding the devoted directed there. And uh, at the Ocasareia, uh, two or maybe three colonnade streets were uh, realized on already existent streets around the Zeus Obius temple and certainly had not only, but also a religious function for the flow of people, because we must imagine that this sanctuary had a very big flow of people. To conclude, I conclude with two historical photos by Gertrude Lothian Bell. Uh, this one from Hierapolis Castabala uh, before excavation, and this one from Soloi Pompeiopolis. Taking into account from various perspectives, the specific characteristics in building and architecture of colonnade streets, in southeastern Anatolia, we can find some clear reference to Syrian models, of which local architects were undoubtedly aware. We can perceive also the adoption of peculiar regional features, implying a local adaptation of an imported model. An overall stylistic and chronological overview reveals that quite certainly Cilicia, and later also Pamphylia and Pisidia, played a role of intermediary for the transmission of models between Syria and Asia Minor. Uh, colonnaded avenues in Plain Cilicia are closer to their in their layout to Syrian ones, whereas moving towards the west, we assist to a progressive marmorization and to an adaptation to more, let's say, Asiatic trends. Thence, the analyzed monuments perfectly fit within the framework of a mixed and composite culture and lead us to consider southeastern Anatolia as a real crossroads also upon this perspective. Thank you for your attention.